Ladakh, crossroads of High Asia. A cold stony desert marked by the passage of many peoples who left their mark here. The rugged landscape strewn with a million rocks. In this vastness, some are different and special. In the distance, a lone figure searching for his holy grail. There are others like him on a similar search. This is their story, a story of man and rock, spread across and over the ages. Viraf Mehta is an anthropologist by training, by vocation a top CSR entrepreneur and advisor, an ex-CEO drawn here by an abiding love. Joining him is Quentin Dowers, a French historian with a doctorate in ancient Tibetan and Ladakhi forts. Tashi Dawa, a professor of zoology and also Rengzin. who has been a partner in this quest for long. I shall be with them over the next few days as they go about their explorations, checking on the old and the visited, and seeing if there is more there or less. The following day plans are made, sites shortlisted and routes examined. Because of the famous rock there, you know, the Nurla rock, and there's some hidden treasures there. This part of the Indus River here, actually to Lado, we drive straight to Sharakavatan. Coming back, Petroglyph Park is just here. Oh, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. We shall largely be travelling along the Indus, the cradle of many settlements the path many ancient trade and migration routes took and the bearer of the imprint of those who lived and walked then. But first, a look closer to Leh. A few kilometers out of the city, driving through this gateway, we reach the flat plain of Sabathang. Thang means a flat desert and this stretch of Sabah once held great importance. With royalty living here, trade going through, the route to the Nubra Valley and several forts guarding this land. In this expanse of rocks, they are looking for something they had seen before, searching and then finding it. Here, here's one. Yeah, we see a stag here. Now these stags are not native animals known here with antlers, but. Somebody's either seen them elsewhere, and maybe this traveller saw something in Central Asia, yeah. a scenario with tigers and stags, okay, yeah. and thought that he would leave a story of animals that a different type of hunt. Mm. In which case, that he may have been a foreigner. This is a complex design. On this rock and others, exactly the stories emerge. This tale needs a little excavation here, gently, gently. Um, now who knows? Is this the end of the petroglyph? We don't know. There could be some. There might be more. <laughs> this <laughs> might be ten feet. Hand. This complicated one means that you had to study art. You don't just figure this out and say, "Let's draw a deer." Yeah. Somebody practices this art. It becomes a style. This style has a geographical limit. It has definitions. You can replicate it and you can teach it. And I think that that is an means that there were people learning art at that time, trained in graphics, who understand art, understand the stone surface and have used it, understand light. So these are specialized people and they must have had a place in society that allowed them to spend so much time. And Sabatang is not alone in holding these treasures. So whether Rock art sites are spread across Ladakh. Some distance from the Alchi bridge, a turn takes us away from the road that goes to the monastery, possibly the oldest center of Buddhist learning in Ladakh. Going ahead of this, on the left bank, right by the Indus, 
raring out of the sand which half buries it, this boulder. The surface covered by inscriptions of hunting scenes, animal and human figures and anthropomorphs, which are human-like figures with exaggerated features, some embellishments, possibly symbolic. With a single circle and a dot, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe a dozen spokes coming out of the head. A few hundred meters away, close by near the Alchi Bridge, signs of an earlier human presence. This was a camping ground for armies. A vanished fort that once stood sentinel here, and a crossing point across the Indus, with the remains of an ancient bridge. Let's proceed. Yeah. It is rare to find, first of all, such a dramatic boulder at a dramatic location, yes. with dramatic rock art um, initially. So I think in those proto-historic, prehistoric times, you can imagine what a wonderful place to congregate, yes. to hunt, yes. and to record. The imprint of ages on the rock here, by unknown hands. If I was carving something here, I mean, with, with a pokey rock, this would make a good hammer. Yes. Good palm size. And then pick. If they were carrying the other tools, natural hammers would be found. Nobody would carry a kilogram of stone. No, of you. Especially you in Ladakh. Your, yeah, your primary tool and find... Exactly. Because in Ladakh you find hammers everywhere. The long tail of predator. Rituals and beliefs carved onto the rock. A lasting record. Thing is now, if you go on the top, I, I don't think this is just a hunt. And then although there's a bow and arrow, and facing one ibex, the deeper story here could well be um, a propitiation to this beautiful animal that's so important from a symbolic point of view. The mark of several ages overlaid by more modern Buddhist imagery. Images of chortans, structures where the remains of lamas were interred, etched on top of the earlier images. On the other side of Leh, the road sweeps eastwards along the upper Indus, where it crosses Karu, Upshi, Thikse towards Shara, the gateway to the Changtang. We stop here beside the road. Right across is this level stretch, scattered with rocks and boulders. This valley was important as a route to Nubra and then to Central Asia with a silk route or the other route to Upper Tibet with its gold mines, guarded by as many as six forts. With all the significance of the site here, particularly in terms of trade, in terms of ore, mm -hmm. in terms of minerals, yes. but the depictions of uh, rock art that we will see in a few minutes here yes. are primarily animals, parts of human forms, maybe a few symbols, mm -hmm. but nothing related to trade or later travel, homes, no, here, and yeah. it well, seems before that time. What have we here? Oh, ho, ho. Here is a rider, a horseman. In many terms, I think in a hilly area like this, where would you be hunting on horseback? There may be a Mongolian steppe thing where you have huge Expensive. thumbs, and we have some in Ladakh. Aha, yeah. uh -huh. and the yak with a big hump, and a characteristic a round tufted tail, yeah. which in the analysis of scholars like Deletsa, etc., is a Western Tibetan plateau. This type of art was popular in the metal Asia of Tibet and Central adjoining Asia. Central Asia. So here what's interesting is the depiction of the Path Part of, of the, the arrow, arrow, which also in Central Asia is considered to be an indication from what Bronze Age, meaning once again 3000 years, 4000 years. Interestingly, the path of the arrow can reveal more than just the hunting of the animal. This animal. The depiction of a pregnant female, the hunter purposely pointing the arrow away from it, which seems to indicate some rules of hunting. Which one, would make sense. Which would make sense that you they don't. Know that they need new stock. They need new stock. You don't yeah. kill a um, childbearing animal. Mm -hmm. From this angle, these depictions of life, then, look how the would they have been made? Over millennia, a formation that's called desert varnish, varnish because it's shiny, desert because it's open and sunny, from a few millimeters thick to sometimes even a centimeter thick. Yes. A dark color. The rock art is actually done by removing that varnish and exposing the rock and it gets repatinated over time, over time again yes. which gives you visual clues as to How its antiquity and there is this rock 
with a stylistically rare set of handprints. Very, very rare to get multiple depictions of hands and to get a dozen of them on a rock is absolutely exceptional. Yeah, if we go further down the Indus, just a few hundred yards, on the left side, we once again come across two unique carvings that we have never seen in Ladakh. Hike up the hill. So we go further down the road. Quentin. What awaits us what is? is up there. The twins of Shara. Two unique pieces of rock art. Once again, they face the Indus River. And as we've just seen ahead, we have history. But why this particular point was chosen for these two unique petroglyphs is a mystery. A mask possibly, or a symbol of importance. Big, over a meter high. Unlike any other piece. The other a short distance away, both at a slant, almost at the same angle, facing the river, looking up to the sky. Were they guardians, deities? The mascots, as they are termed, look on impassively. Why they've chosen a yak on the left and a blue sheep on the right, and why their handprints below it, did, were they done at the same time? We don't have. But that short end is superimposed, you can tell clearly. The patina on the other mascoid is darker. Visually, it seems older. This rock shelter. There is an overhang of rock, a shelter close to the mascoid. Shelter, three people. At another spot right at the edge of the Indus. Oh, yes. An instinctive search and a moment of discovery. Oh, okay, Karan, that's amazing. Please. Had you ever seen one like this with just one circle like that? No, 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 never, 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 never. This rock has a weird color, patina, whatever you want to call it. And there were more of these shapes actually. Because then if you turn on the other side, this is the amazing stuff. Something strange going on here. Another mark. Look, two eyes, nose, Asha. mouth. Wow. Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a good discovery, man. The new find is examined, measured and photographed. Another piece of rock art to be added to the list they have compiled over many years. You're the rock art specialist. 